God designed sex to be a beautiful picture of the gospel, of freedom, of living in surrender to him. So we've been talking about dating, and tonight we're going to talk about sex. All right. So you might be thinking, I've heard that marriage reflects Christ in the church, but the act of sex? Say what? So Ephesians chapter 5, verses 24 through 32. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ in the church. So Paul's like, this mystery is profound. In other words, this is something I can't truly understand or explain, but it refers to Christ in the church. Paul is relating human marriage to the relationship between Christ and the church. This is a beautiful picture. It's a type. Listen up. You're going to want to know this. Because when you take theology later on, you're going to need to know, right? Because all of you guys are going to take theology classes. Because you're super excited about big words and context and biblical narrative. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this type, it's a picture of when Jesus comes back. He's going to be the husband. And when he comes back, he's going to grab the church as his wife. And they're going to become one. Isn't that cool? That's a beautiful picture of God's promise to us. And so what we do as husbands and wives, as men and women, we get to live out that type here on earth. But there's a right way to do that. So God created marriage as a type of the relationship Christ has with the church. Now, I mean, guys, let's be honest, okay? If we didn't have such a worldly filtered view of sex we would be able to see it as what it was truly meant to be. And we wouldn't be embarrassed to talk about it because it's something that God ordained. And it's something that God created. But because we hear all these things that's contrary to Scripture, and we listen to our friends who talk about things according to sex that's contrary to Scripture, we get this, I call it the unfiltered worldly view of sex because we're inundated with these thoughts that's not godly. And so what I'm hoping that we'll see today is that there's some thoughts that you guys should be thinking about other than what your friends or what Hollywood says. So marriage wasn't created thousands of years ago by men, but by God. He created it and defined it. He set it up, and he even set it up for the idea of spiritual oneness. Now, this is important. God wasn't shocked by sex. He designed it. It's a good thing. It's not something to run away from unless you're like Paul and you're all good for the rest of your life. You're like, hey, I'm staying, I'm staying abstinent and I'm serving the Lord. Go, Paul. I couldn't do that. I'm like, I'm going to find me a woman. You know, I just, that's who I am. I, I can't live life by myself. That's just not, you know, I, I, need, I needed a wife. And thank God for Nicole because she puts up with me. So, it's the idea of two people coming together as one in the flesh that was created by God. So this was to reflect Christ in the church. That's important. Remember that. Remember that. When you're married, you are associated with your, with your spouse. So what that means is that your emotions are blended. What hurts one hurts the other. Now look, I'll be honest. If I come home and Nicole had a tough day and, and she's, you know, she's upset, I get upset. Just because we're one. We're husband and wife. And so I, I want her to feel better. I want her to be happy. And so if that means, you know, going to change five diapers and cleaning beds and taking baths and letting her go sit in the room and have some quiet time, then that's what I'm going to do. 
Because if my, I'd rather work and my wife be happy than me be lazy and her not be. Okay? And that should be the attitude of all of us, most definitely. So what brings joy to one brings joy to the other. Now, same with the church. What brings joy to Christ should bring joy to the church. Okay? So if we're finding joy in things outside of what Christ wants us to find joy in, then it's not necessarily what Christ has for us. So, married, married, married men and women, men and women come together as one. The girls said they put women on the right because they're always right. So... <laughs> True, true, I'm facing the other way, yeah. <laughs> so this is a cool picture, guys. So when, when two, when a man and a woman come together as one in marriage, they become one. But when they have sex, they spiritually become one. It exemplifies the bond. An unbreakable bond. One that is not meant to be broken. Okay. So in ancient times, marriage wasn't, quote-unquote, considered official by someone coming in and reading rights and whatnot. Marriage was considered official when two came together as one and had sex. That's just the way it was back then. And so it exemplifies that bond. It was official once they had sex. So sex and marriage is what declared you married in that time. Now... It is meant to be intimate, to bring the attachment between husband and wife together. It's a picture of us surrendering ourselves to Jesus Christ in the gospel, right? So when a man and a woman come together, they surrender themselves to one another in holy submission. And when we see Christ, us as the church, and we see Christ, we see Christ, we wholly submit ourselves to him. And we say, Christ, you can have all of me. You can have my flesh. You can have my desires, my passions, my wants, my needs. Whatever you want, you can have. And when a man and a woman come together, that same thing happens. If Nicole really wants to watch a chick flick, and she's been talking about it for a couple of days, guess what Chet's going to do? He's watching a chick flick. Okay, that's just what's going to happen. Because she wants to watch it. Now, a couple of days later, I'm going to remember that. I'm like, oh, you remember that last time we watched the show? I want to watch the show now. <laughs> right? Um, you submit yourselves to one another, guys. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Okay. Listen to Read this quote, all right? Sex with no strings attached. I've heard that. Is either impossible or you have gone so far in sin that you are blind to what God has created you for. I lived my life blind, and it has costed me much, much, much in my life. And I don't want that for you guys. So that's why we're doing this series. Because I know what you're hearing in school. I know what your church friends are watching on the internet. I know. I've been there. I want to show you something. And I hope this helps. All right. So, when you date Bubba, old sexy man with big biceps, <laughs> guys, when you date that hot-looking woman who fits those jeans just right, and you're like, you know what? I think I'm ready to hook up. I think we're going to get it on, right? And so when you make a decision to do that, you give yourself to that person, everything you have, and hold in submission. You become spiritually bonded as once. And what happens whenever you break up? You are completely distraught, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. So the significance of sex is this. It represents something greater than itself, right? So when we think, we can think, oh, you know what, man, I've, I've been raised to view this as a pleasurable thing, as something that's selfish to me, like, I need it, I want it kind of thing. But really, it's an act of selflessness. So when a man and a woman come together as one, that act of sex is an act of surrender to one another. It's an act of service to one another. It's not this thing that you do just because you think you need it or because you think you want it. All right? So it's a type or an illustration of something greater. It becomes complicated or corrupt, like some of you said, when you go outside of the given order of things and do that just because you think it feels good. All right, 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 17. I don't think I'll put it up there for you, but I'll read it. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? Hmm. For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. Because some of you probably have never heard this, and it may be a little, a little shocking to hear, but I want you to hear it, okay? If you have sex outside the context of marriage, it is as if you were standing on a street corner giving yourself to someone you don't know. The reason why you don't sleep with someone who isn't your spouse is because you become one spirit with them. Let's recap. Number one, God created sex to be enjoyed between a husband and a wife. Look, you want to go to the best fireworks show? You hold off until that marriage, that marriage night. And it'll be like 4th of July eternally. You know what I'm saying? It'll be awesome. All right? So if you truly want to experience something really radical, like super radical, like psh, Blow your mind radical and think about it for the rest of your life? Hold off a little while, okay? Just be honest. Number two, don't use the freedom Jesus has given you as an excuse to sin. Don't use it. You have freedom, but if you abuse it, Jesus sees it. And consequences will be given. Why? Because God disciplines his children because he wants his best for us. Number three, there is forgiveness if you have messed up. There is forgiveness if you have messed up, guys. If you're sitting here today and you're saying, man, you know, I looked at that site earlier today. I just can't help it. This temptation comes over me. I don't know what to do. It's, it's, it enthralls me, and, and I just can't, I can't control it. Maybe you're sitting here today and thinking, man, you know, my brother or sister does some really dumb things at home, some really nasty things at home, and they've been showing me things, and I really don't know how to respond to this. Or maybe some of you are here today thinking, wow, you know, a couple of years ago I messed up. I really messed up, and I just don't know how I can reconcile with that. I don't know what steps to take. And some of you may be sitting here today thinking this is a joke and don't know what it's like to have an ever-living relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here for the first time and you're thinking, wow, what does this relationship with Jesus Christ really look like? It's, guys, it's very simple. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 11 says, if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved, saved from torment in eternity. Because if you do not accept Jesus and Jesus comes back on that judgment day, when he comes back as the husband and the church, as his bride and takes them in, you will not go to heaven. You will go to hell for eternity. But if you say right now, Jesus, I will give you my life. I will make you my Lord. I will wholly surrender myself to you in an act of submission, you will instantly be granted into the children of God and you will be declared a son or a daughter of the Most High. And you know what happens after that? God gives you his Holy Spirit as like a stamp of approval. Hey, that's my boy. Hey, that's my girl. And you cannot take that boy or girl from me. No one on this earth can take away the power and presence and peace and hope that the Holy Spirit can give you. 